The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Mr Chairman, I don't want to make any um, contribution in regards to the Auckland Harbour Bridge and its suitability <coughs> or not for putting houses under. Why I think that's, well, that's probably the point of another debate. Um, I'm, but I am very interested in the question that my colleague Chris Hipkins has raised in relation to the appropriateness of putting in a statute repeal bill a whole schedule which does not deal with any repeal of statutes but deals with amendments to other acts. And these are quite, well, they're non controversial, I assume, um, I, and, and I know from the lack of submissions to the Select Committee. But I still don't know if this is the appropriate vehicle. This is something that our committee of, of the whole House has been challenged on in a number of instances previously, where we've had in the statutes amendment bill proposals that don't meet the criteria for that. I know that the statutes repeal criteria is different than statutes amendment, but I would be interested if the minister in the chair, who usually does respond to questions, um, would find out what the criteria is for a statutes repeal bill, and is it broad enough to allow amendments to other acts? So in Schedule 2, which is part of Part 4, we are amending the Flags, Emblems and Names Protection Act of 1981, um, with quite a substantial insertion. We are inserting, inserting a section in relation to the unauthorised, unauthorised use of King George V Memorial Children's Health Camp Federation emblem not something that I think is done too frequently. Um, as my colleague mentioned earlier, we have the Government Roading Powers Act amendment, which is substantially to do with the Auckland Harbour Bridge, but we also have an amendment to the Public Works Act, and we have an amendment to the State Sector Act. So how are these amendments, whether they're non-controversial or whether they're needed to make sure that the bill is fit for purpose in this day and age, how is this properly done in a statutes repeal bill? I would also be interested to know if the Business Committee has considered looking at any of these issues and see if there's a less onerous way of us progressing dismissal of books from the statutes register, dis d dismissal of acts, if those acts are no longer used. They're, they've done their time, they had no sunset provision in them, um, but they're no longer used for anything at all. Is there a better way than having a bill introduced to the Parliament, referred to the Select Committee, back to the Committee of a Whole House and then on to the third reading? Is there a smarter way of us doing it? It seems to me that this is a real opportunity for us to look at the criteria and say, is this better as a statutes amendment type of provision, or could there be some separate new type of debate in Parliament where we, we could say we will allow time for parties to consider all the legislation, time for public submissions if it's considered appropriate, but certainly um, a, a smarter way of doing this. In the Australian Parliament, they have different types of debates that are held simultaneously. Uh, some of them are a complete um, opportunity for promoting oneself, I think, and that's all. I'm not proposing that. I just don't think that we need to spend uh, uh, the usual process of the Parliament to dismiss acts that are no longer fit for purpose. So that's my first point. The second one is that, um, just referring to the original reason for this being introduced, I want to repeat that I can see no benefit at all or potential gain to the productivity level of New Zealand by us amending the Flags, Emblems and Names Protection Act of 1981, and that was alleged to have been the purpose of this legislation, nor of the complete repeal of between 132 and 137 acts. I counted and I got 132. So I think the member who interjected on this earlier on might have to count again. He might need to count. I think he was including the ones that are amended rather than repealed. So, and the um, final point I want to make, um, Mr Speaker, is just to say that in this section there doesn't appear to be anything controversial, unlike the other ones. I think that is appropriate. I urge the Minister to just ask, answer that one question. What is the criteria that is required before parts can be included in a statutes repeal bill? If we could have that information, we can conclude the debate, I'm sure. Mr Chair. Chris Farfoy. 